Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for Behind the Exhibition, 20 Women Artists Now. I am Katie Dolgoff, OMA's Exhibitions Manager and Registrar, and we are so happy to be able to hold this exciting virtual program for you. Uh, welcoming you from near and far, wherever you are. And we're also thrilled that OMA's galleries are now open to the public for you to visit and get a close look at the artwork we are gonna learn about tonight. So whenever you are ready to arrange a visit, just head on over to OMA's website to see our new hours and to make a reservation. Before we get started this evening, I just wanted to point out a couple of features to enhance your experience during the program. Uh, the first is the chat box on the side where you can share your thoughts with everyone throughout the program. Just make sure to send your chat to panelists and attendees. Uh, the chat does default to just panelists. Also at the end of tonight's program, we are gonna have a Q and A session. So, if you click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen anytime during the program, you can send us your questions and we will do our best to get an answer to every question that comes through. Okay, let's get started. I would like to welcome tonight's speakers, Alessandra Moctezuma, the curator of exhibition 20 Women Artists Now, and the director of the Art Gallery at San Diego Mesa College, and Julia C.R. Gray, one of the 20 women artists and the artist who originally proposed this exhibition to OMA two years ago. So welcome, Alessandra and Julia. How are you both this evening? I'm so excited to chat with you. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for having us. And, and I wanted to shout out to TWA. I wish that all 20 women could be here with us, but I'm going to do my best to share all of our experiences. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. And actually, that's a really good opportunity to plug an exciting um, gallery activity in the works where uh, when visitors come to OMA soon, they will get to hear from all 20 women artists. So keep a look out for Art Speaks Now, the gallery activity that'll be launching soon. Alessandra, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. We've had a pretty exciting week at Mesa College. We were using a steamroller to make <laughs> large three by five uh, woodcut prints. And so we invited 15 artists and the students and we've been printing the whole week and it's been really, really fun. And we will have an exhibition in May outdoors of all the prints, so. Oh, that's um, exciting. Really that sounds exciting. like a lot of work. Sounds like heavy well, lifting. It was a lot of work, but Jenny Armour, my assistant, loved driving that steamroller. So that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. All right. Well, that's really exciting here. I can't wait to go see that one, especially it's outdoors. It's going to be a beautiful uh, time to see some artwork outside in the sunshine. So uh, tell me a little bit more about yourselves. Um, let's hear from Julia, then Alessandra. I'm Julia C.R. Gray. Uh, I'm a native Californian. Um, and I live in North Coastal San Diego County with my husband, Dana, who is an art loving guy. I'm so fortunate. We have three grown sons and um, I get a lot of inspiration and peace when I walk on the beach at a regular basis and photograph the beach there. And sometimes that feeling weaves its way into, into my work. Um, I started training as a painter when I was 13 with oil painting and um, I changed my focus from 2D to 3D when I got a BFA um, from San Francisco Art Institute in 2014. So now I sculpt my canvases and then paint right on them. Wow, that's pretty cool. And yes, and when we get to see your work uh, uh, in a few minutes, people will understand that how the paintings become three-dimensional objects. Um, Alessandra, tell me a little bit about yourself. So my name is Alessandra Moctezuma. I have a famous last name. And um, I was born in Mexico City. I immigrated to Los Angeles as a teenager with my family. My father was a filmmaker. And, um, and I grew up in LA. I went to UCLA, to Santa Monica College, so community college, and then to UCLA for my uh, bachelor's in studio art. And then I did my master's also at UCLA in actually in printmaking and painting. 
Um, and after I finished school, I, uh, I got a job working with Chicana muralist Judith Baca. And with her, I learned a lot about not only painting murals, but also how an arts organization runs. And I did a lot of curating and working at the organization. And then after that, I did public art management and I got the job at Mesa in 2001. So I've been there almost 20 years and I'm now moved more towards the directing of the art gallery and teaching rather than making art. But I still have a great love for working with artists and I, do, I, I just, couldn't wish anything else. And I live here in San Diego with my husband, Mike Davis, who's a well-known historian. And we have twins who are right now in their senior year in high school, all remote. Wow, that is a challenging time to be a senior in high school. <laughs> that is something completely different. Well, we are really, really happy to have you here in uh, San Diego, Alessandra, um, being the second exhibition I've worked with, uh, with you on. This is it has been nothing but wonderful. Um, and then this is the first exhibition that we've worked with the 20 women artists, although I have uh, worked with a, a number of them on other projects. But Julia, tell me a little bit more about the organization, the group 20 women artists. Tell me, how did they get started? What's, what's the mission? What kind of activities do you guys do? Well, it first started with about half a dozen of artists um, who were working alone in their studio and just felt that they wanted to have camaraderie and support. And so about six women would get together at cafes and different places like that. And, and then in 2015, they decided to grow the group and bring in other professional artists. So we grew to 18 members at that time. And also um, Lori Mitchell is teaches at the Athenaeum and the Athenaeum allowed us to have a room there monthly. So we would meet at the Athenaeum. Um, each month. And uh, of course, camaraderie is a really top thing and we become a close net group, but we also like to bring, bring in uh, professional resources to speak with us and share, you know, to help us with our work. And, um, and also we just, we want, we support each other in our work. And then it became important for us to start showing together. And so now our mission includes finding and producing um, exhibitions together. Um, so it, it's a wonderful collaboration. We're really fortunate to have each other. Yeah, uh, let me tell you, having been able to get to know all 20 of you, some of whom I hadn't worked before, but some of whom I, I know very well, uh, the group is amazing, a very cohesive and thoughtful group. Who, they, you all really work off each other and bounce ideas off each other. It's, it's wonderful to see the interactions and how that really boosts everybody involved. Um, so we have a few slides, a few images uh, from the exhibition that I think we're going to bring up. Uh, Julia, the idea for the exhibition actually initially started with you. What, uh, what was the inspiration for, for the, this exhibition? Yes, well, it was a response to a successful show that we had in 2018 at the Cannon Gallery called Prom 17 on Being 17. And our focus was at the age of 17. And so when that ended, I thought we really need to do an exhibition about now, about the wisdom that we have now, the women that we have that we are now, and, um, and what our work is like now. And so that was the concept. And when I presented it to TWA, everybody got on board, everybody worked together to create a really nice proposal to share with OMA. Um, and, uh, and, when, and that was when that was accepted that we were so excited and we started planning our work for 2021, like OMA had wanted, scheduled us for. And then 2020 hit. And this idea of theoretical now, concepts about now, our work about now, it just changed completely. Um, 2020, just we had to talk about what was happening in the current time because it was just so crazy. We couldn't ignore that. And amazingly, so many of the artists just threw out their works and took a deep dive into, into now. 
Yeah, the the it was an amazing now to be responding to, um, and there are so many really critical topics that are are heavy hitting topics that are covered in this exhibition. And the person responsible for pulling it all together and making it all work, uh, of course, is Alessandra. Um, so Alessandra, you've been an integral part of advancing the vision of this exhibition. So tell me more about how you got involved. Um, I was approached by, um, by actually uh, Katie and, and, and Julia and Kathleen. Um, so, so they wanted to, bringing a curator that had a perspective that involved a lot of the different issues that were happening in the moment. And it's an intersection of issues dealing with women's rights, with social justice, with environmental concerns. And those were a lot of the things that I have been interested in curating. You know, I've, I did the exhibition at Oceanside on Documenta, which talked about you know, issues of migration. And so, so it's been a series of topics that um, you know, that I've been interested in. And so they wanted that perspective and that point of view. And, and then, of course, with 2020, a lot of those topics just came to the fore because we encountered um, so many struggles in, uh, in these different arenas. And I, um, you know, I really uh, love to have those conversations with the artists and start to, you know, to seek out those um, moments that were important. And of course it was 2020, it was the pandemic, it was um, George Floyd's murder and a lot of the um, social justice protests um, critiquing and trying to change in institutional racism. And um, it was also the issues that were going around with um, with the um, election and the divisiveness that was happening. Uh, but there were also a lot of hopeful things that we were looking at and trying to find beauty in difficult times was something else that we were pulled towards. And so it was really fabulous to work with all of the artists and be able to have them, um, you know, listen to my, uh, my perspective. And I, I think that the end result was really a fantastic. And so here we have Kathleen Kane Morrell. And when we were meeting, um, we were talking a lot about issues related to the environment. And you see this dress form that represents, you know, women's roles uh, with the ginkgo leaves. That's beautiful as you enter the museum and you have the, you know, the sunlight hitting those golden leaves. And then La Ultima is a piece that she did about endangered species and uh, the butterflies. So, so, so very important ways that we bring attention to um, the climate change and, um, and some of that was reflected in also a year of, of fires that we had last year. So that's one of the topics. And then Julia's work, I also had a lot of conversations um, with, with Julia um, about coming together and trying to change things. And uh, this piece, uh, She, the Power of Protest, was a lot of the, the people that would come in together uh, with the Black, Li Black Lives Matter protest, of course, the Women's March. Uh, and then we were trying to come up with a number that was significant. And um, I had, uh, I mentioned to her that it was the 55th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, which is also another way in which people, you know, came together um, to, to have a true, you know, democratic process. So she chose number 55. And, and created all these torsos talking about that, but it's just this idea of everybody coming together. So those were some of the topics that we were, you know, that I wanted to to bring attention to as I worked with the artists. Yes, and um, I, well, something you said um, in the middle of, uh, of that really caught my 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 ear. Um, the beauty of the works that all came together out of such heavy and tragic topics um it, it was still became an uplifting and beautiful uh, show full of light and color and it really is incredible how how you were able to pull together not only all of those threads and those themes but all of the the color stories that were happening between the artworks as well so um that couldn't have been an easy thing to do in 2020, 
when we were no longer doing studio visits. I don't think I did a, a single visit <laughs> to an artist studio in 2020, except for uh, before before April, before March. How how was it planning this exhibition in, in such a unique time? What was your experience like as a curator? Well, it was a really interesting shift in the way that we worked, but I kind of got used to that shift when I was, we were forced to go remote in teaching. So in March, I had to switch all my classes to Zoom. And so I kind of became the Zoom queen, <laughs> never really good at Zoom, <laughs> and um, presenting my lectures on Zoom and communicating through Zoom. And so we utilized that um, to do the studio visits. And it was, so I had, I organized 20 studio visits on Zoom uh, throughout the summer. And I would meet with the artist and in a way, you know, I really missed out in not being able to see the work in, in person and see all the textures and the colors live. But on the other hand, because it, it was so such heavy moments and we were meeting during the summer. So it was exactly when the Black Lives Matter protest and a lot of the things that were happening and we were many of us being impacted by the isolation and, um, you know, many because of COVID, many of the artists were telling me they hadn't seen their families. And, you know, and I also, you know, had been isolating. And so other things kind of come through the works. Uh, for example, this is Gail Titus work that is, is if not now, when? And it is about um, George Floyd and it is calling attention to issues of uh, racial injustice. But when she was showing me this piece and when I had the studio visit with her on Zoom was right after the fires. And my cousin uh, had evacuated because of the fires uh, here in San Diego. And to me, even though this painting is about George Floyd and, and you also see, you know, some of the, you know, the protests and of course here in La Mesa, there were also, you know, some buildings that, um, you know, that were lit by, uh, and so the, the idea of the protest, but also for me was also my image of the fire. So everything kind of, comes together when I see this image and it has a huge impact. And I think when people go through the exhibit, this will hit them. And, you know, all of these memories of what was happening during this 2020 uh, just come to the fore in a lot of, in a lot of these beautiful works. Mm -hmm. um, then the other things that, for example, uh, Jillian Moss, another artist, uh, we had great conversations because she's actually from Belfast and my husband family is from Belfast. So we were talking about, uh, you know, what was going on also there with the pandemic, but she was really interested in bringing attention to issues of um, social justice and the trauma of racism. And, and this, this uh, collage is actually evolved and they're very conceptual and to you know to explain them to the audience the um image that you see with that horizon line and the kind of lines that go up and down that's actually um the recording of the words breathe humanity and stop which she recorded and then she graphed that audio and then she overlaid them with a silhouette of her hands holding um a phone uh, to try because that was the way that we were. If you look at the next slide, also is another another example uh, of the ways that we were documenting what was happening, and and that was the way that we during the pandemic we also were connected with what was happening um, all over the uh, United States, but you know uh, with the George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter uh, protest, and so um, and then Lori Mitchell also was very much interested in uh, in this topic and looking at these beautiful images of families coming together and families celebrating and everything looks um, very um, idyllic um, and um, but this was also the concept of the darkness that lurks behind uh, the whole history of the United States with uh, racism that goes back, you know, centuries, and that's what can be seen in the in the pieces that you see above the colorful, um, happy uh, moments. And then at the very top, she started marking also the deaths. Um, and if you look at the next slide, she continues to look at these images of you know the happy moments, 
but overlaid with this also the the trauma you know that exists because of that historical experience and then um there's also in the next image um what she's done is that many of the artists were personally affected by covid you know knowing family members knowing friends that were um taken ill or that died uh, sadly our my husband lost four friends four close friends to covid uh, in the first, you know, four months of the, um, uh, even in the first, you know, couple of months uh, in France, in New York. And so what Lori has done is that she's created a visual representation so that it's not just the numbers, but it's just actual, we think of the actual stories and people that we've lost. So it, it becomes also a um, way to memorialize um, the, the losses. So this just were some things that came through during this year. And of course, um, Julia San Roman, that's another aspect, the heroes of the of this period. And uh, many of them women, uh, essential workers, either in the healthcare industry, or if you think of farm workers out in the fields, or people in the grocery stores. So Julia is a wonderful artist, but she also works as a, as a medical interpreter. So a lot of the patients that she, um, you know, she helps with translation services, um, she used them as her models, you know, thinking of, of their struggle, thinking of, of what they've contributed. And they're just really gorgeous. I actually wore this blouse with the flowers, thinking of the beautiful flowers that she, where she crowns these models and these women um, to, you know, to celebrate them. and and to make us um, uh, you know, acknowledge their, um, you know, their contributions. Yes, I really love Julia San Ramon's uh, paintings. I mean, I, I love all the artwork here, but um, uh, some details that might not come through as clearly in the slides is, uh, so this, this artwork is called the fasteners and you can see a little pile of fasteners, a little pile of uh, screws and, and nails and bolts because these, these women, these, the essential workers over the last year are the ones who are keeping us together. They're the gears, uh, which is in another one of her paintings and the cogs that are, are running the behind the scenes action. And um, I, I think I thought that was a really beautiful um, metaphor that she put into her paintings. Um, but um, Julia, so uh, Alessandra had such a unique time curating the exhibition, but what was it like from an artist's perspective? How, how was this different preparing this exhibition as compared to um, other exhibitions you've worked on? Um, it was a roller coaster ride. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because things change so much. But there were also some positive things in that we had time to be in our studios. Um, though some artists had a really hard time starting their work because everything had changed so much. And um, Diane Hall, she had an especially difficult time. Um, her husband had passed not long before COVID and she found herself alone in her home and in her studio. And the, um, the work that she agreed to do with us, Alessandra, Alessandra said, I love these black and white pieces. Let's do those and do 16 of them. And so Diane said, oh my God, 16. And then recently she told me that saved her, that gave her something to work for, toward. Um, and then Diana Carey, um, and you can go to hers next, her image is next. Um, she, she had a situation also where she had it all figured out. She was gonna speak all about the artwork that she does now, um, where she is at with her work as a woman who throws paint um, and usually does these abstracted um, landscapes. And then the political now and the fires and everything that was happening, she, she just completely changed her work and um, started doing collages and um, pulling up information that was happening in the headlines. So every day she was immersed in the headlines and doing the real, really hard look uh, work of just looking at what was happening and sharing it in her work. So um, that was the challenge. And then um, Ellen 
also she had this Ellen's work and Ellen works like this anyways, but each day she would add on to this piece for a year. So she worked through all the way through the year too. And there are little bits, you know, when you're in the museum, you really have to go in and look close at these works because they are so dense with information and so beautifully and masterfully created. Um, another artist uh, who worked, of course, alone in her studio, but was greatly affected by COVID and um, being stuck in, in her studio. And that's um, Teresa. And um, she felt like the rooms closing in on her and and then and then yet she had needed to bring in the chaos and then also the importance of having space and having home so um so that's Teresa's work it it was really a, it was really a mixed bag I know I was in my studio seven days a week pretty much for the working on all the work for a year. And um, and some of the artists had that experience, like Teresa, she was like that. And then some of the artists just, it took a long time for them to be able to settle into what they were going to create. And, and yet I, uh, especially with some of the artists that you mentioned, um, I've, I've known their work for a while, like Diana Carey, um, it seems like it pushed artists to the brink to create something new and different like this. Yeah, this work is completely different than work Diana has done before. And it's so exciting to watch that evolution and watch how um, how the although it was a traumatizing, how it has changed her or her way of working and I, I don't know uh, I haven't talked to her about you know is this the direction you're going to uh, lo look at for the long term are you going to continue um, working with your other your other style but uh, it, it really is fascinating how it has stretched creative boundaries um, and I do want to note especially with this group of artists you just mentioned Diane Hall, Diana Carey, Ellen Dieter and uh, Teresa vandenberg Donch you have to see these works in person the the detail in them the the tiny faces the little words that you can pull out of these works uh you could spend a a, a whole day just looking at one work ellen's work is 10 feet wide i think or it's, it's 11 <laughs> 11 feet wide and yeah. there's a lot, so much to take in there because of course 2020 there was so much to take in during the year um so many different themes started emerging from the year that were, were competing for our attention um so alessandra what what themes that the artists were exploring uh, really stood out to you in this exhibition well, um, I, some of the things that I've talked about um, in the earlier works, but, but that you also see come across as you walk through the exhibition. And those themes, the exhibition is organized in a sense that um, you have themes that you can see as you go from gallery to gallery, but you also, I also picked up in, it was interesting, artists working in isolation, and yet a lot of the colors that came through in the works and that that you you make those connections and that narrative that visual narrative that comes through in the galleries um is really interesting and wonderful but um but for a lot of the artists you know we were talking about um political issues some of the artists had not done works that were so um political uh, but i suggested that this was an opportunity to touch upon those things. And because 2020 also was a time uh, where we're, we were inundated you know, by a lot of different issues. Um, so um, Julia San Roman talked about you know, immigrant workers in her paintings and, um, and Lori you know, is showing uh, issues um, of the lives of African-Americans and how they're affected by um, the history of you know, institutional racism. Um, but Brenda York was also thinking about these themes um, and within the, the positioning of, of mothers, you know, mothers that, um, for example, George Floyd calling out for his mother um, and myself as a mother, you know, you always have this desire to, you're hoping that you're going to leave the world a little bit better 
for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a big impetus in, um, in, in trying to change things. And, um, and when uh, Brenda and I were having a conversation about these pieces, it was also about, yeah, the, the living a better world for the next generation. So you see the world floating up and environmental issues also uh, come into play in many of the um, exhibition uh, artworks and, and what the artists were talking about. And also um, the children in, separated from their mothers and their families and the children in cages came through in Brenda's work. And then Christine uh, uh, Schrimmer in this in this really gorgeous triptych. I, I just I realized as I was putting this together, that a lot of the artists worked with triptychs, um, which is interesting because three is also um, a very important iconic kind of number uh, to use. But um, Christine was also thinking about racism and how a lot of uh, during this year many many people had to confront you know the racism and confront uh, ideas of privilege and and really try to change and you have you see in these paintings uh abstracted but you see the forms and the people you know maybe reaching out you know coming together or pulling apart and i think it's a really beautiful way to deal with some of these topics. And then, of course, we also have, um, next slide, Manuelita Brown's work. Manuelita Brown. Uh, we have uh, Julia is one of the sculptors in the exhibit, and Manuelita is, is the other sculptor in the exhibition. And, um, and she's, through the years, brought attention also to kind of our shared struggle and shared humanity. Uh, and, and this is just touches upon, again, the people with the raised fist, you know, my, many of my students, even my uh, myself, uh, my family going out to the to the protests, you know, and with our signs and and trying to or my friends, all of my friends getting together and my niece and my sisters doing the women's march and coming together. So this also is is really important. And the next slide, we also have um, compassion. That's also so important. And Manuelita, um, here you see the the wo the woman, you know, uh, seeking, you know, asking for alms. And uh, we think of issues that we have right now with um, homelessness and uh, also the economic, devastating economic situation for a lot of us. The next one. Um, and and her pieces are just beautiful in making us connect. Uh, with us, those these shared experiences, uh, and so next one. And so I so those were some of the themes that came through. Yeah, there is there is really a, a strong connection with with all of the work just to humanity. Um, and I think that last piece of Manuelita's Missy is is one that really it's so elegant and striking and human. Um, and, and it's the, the, sim the simplest form. Um, and, and of course, there are so many, not just, not just tragic themes, but uh, themes of hope, like Alessandro was saying earlier, and um, powerful figures uh, that we, that emerge to look up to. Um, and uh, so, uh, Julia, what, what are some other themes that really stood out to you? So, an overarching theme that really stands out to me when I'm in this gallery spaces is um, the power of women's voices and how we used our narrative to talk about the things that were happening and um, and to use, you know, the artists, they're so masterful. Like when you look at Kathy's work here, she's, she's literally talking about, um, you know, women's voices speaking truth to power. And, um, and she does it so beautifully. And it just, this connection that we have just weaves its way through the museum. And um, it's so wonderful. And Rin's work, um, which is in the next slide, um, she's using her voice to kind of quietly talk about the elephant in the room, which are you know, the, the things that we aren't paying attention to or speaking about that are so important. And um, I'm so happy that Ren is part of this. Ren is one of our guest artists 
And, um, and I've known her for many, many years. We're, we're really good friends. And um, when, when she accepted this show, it got her to um, painting again, because she's all, she's been an artist her whole life, but she is also a homeopathic doctor. And she was overwhelmed with, with, um, you know, patients. And so she balanced doing this work through COVID <laughs> and, and treating patients. <laughs> so I'm really happy she's part of the work here. And then, um, and then Bronley is another um, artist that of course is, is in our group. And um, she's talking also, you know, about the experience of, you know, building our nests and, and preparing it all and then them being empty and how that you know, how that feels. Um, and yet through it all, there's this weaving again of connectedness and how we are stronger together. And, and Bronley's work is another, you just, it's so beautifully done and subtle. You, you have to stand close in front of it and, and really see, you know, the, the layers and, and the level of work that, that Bronley creates. Yeah, the this is yeah another one that um, when you see it in person, these pieces are also very very big. It's hard to uh, put that across in the in the images, but they are um, oh gosh, I want to say six feet or eight feet tall. Uh, so yeah, it, it is a very very impactful. And if you if you notice, there are eggs on one side and there are no eggs on the other, and I think that's representing the theme of. Um, of of moving on finding changing place transitions um there is so much to find to connect with to find meaning with in this exhibition what, alessandra what would you say is is the the biggest impact of this exhibition what what is the the most relevancy it has to to us as a community i know there's so many ways but if you had to describe uh, some ways, one way. Well, I, I think that the beauty that comes through the exhibition is just a testimony to our resilience and, um, and how we survived. And we all found different strategies to get through this, to get through this time. Um, and I think that who would have imagined that when we planned this show, Everything that we thought about our world, our safety, our stability would be in a way, you know, our feelings about safety and stability would be taken from us. Who would have thought that we would have to spend a year isolated in our homes, you know, teaching on remotely, working remotely, wearing masks, sanitizing everything. <laughs> um, it was just, um, you know, just such a, it, it's going to be a moment that, you know, we're going to tell, our kids are going to tell their kids about 2020. Um, but what comes through the exhibition as you walk through this is that it's just so there's such beauty that emanates from it. And and I think that that's um, what these artists were searching for, too. Um, my, you know, Maite's amalgamation, you know, we were talking about the virus and we were talking about kind of science and uh, and, and these very organic forms and fluid forms but they all, always also make me think about be, the beauty in nature, you know, the, the, you know, the fear that we have of the virus, but on the other hand, there's also the, the, the beauty that we find always in nature and that surrounds us. And next slide, um, we again, you know, with Susan Darnall and, and many of the artists were also trying to find those those joyful moments with their families and um my you know my niece had her baby just as we shut down and um and a lot of the us were we were gravitating towards those that cocoon or that nest of our family and trying to find that i feel that during this period yes my kids couldn't go to their last year of high school but i've gotten to know them better and i've gotten to you know, be closer to them. And that's been a gift of, of 2020. And so I think in this beautiful painting of these wings and thinking of, of nature, my walks around the neighborhood was another way that I, I dealt with this time. And, and I know Julia was sharing her pictures from the, her walks in the beach every morning. And I would look for her posts every, I would look through social media for posts, the next slide, for posts of my friends like, 
of the sunsets or the sunrises, and, and that was coming through also. Uh, and so it was, so yeah, so I think the theme of resilience, that how we came through this, this time and, and survived, you know, by, by coming together, by these artists, these 20 women artists coming together and collaborating. And in the end, you know, I think it's a, it's a message about hope. So the next slides, you know, it's about renewal. Uh, it's about, you know, now we're figuring out how to start up again. Um, and we've learned some lessons along the way, maybe to have a better balance between our, you know, home life and our work life. Maybe the fact that to protect the environment, maybe sometimes we can work from home and not have so much pollution and things like that. So I think there's positive things that we can find. And I really love this piece by Kaori Fukuyama, and you do have to go there and experience it in person and see it because it glows so beautifully. And that's kind of the, the, um, the exit point of the exhibition to leave the viewer with this idea of you know, uplifting idea of the beacon of, of hope as they, um, as they leave the exhibition. Yes, and uh, I want to point out a, a comment that, um, in case uh, some some of our viewers haven't seen it in the chat, is uh, from Terry Zimdar's. What she was impressed with was the artist representation, not expressing rage and anger at all of the challenges over the last year, but thoughtful, meaningful, sensitive, and caring expressions, not angry protest art. Even though there is protest art, but it's it's hopeful and powerful and positive. Um, and I, I, I agree. I think that is, is one of the biggest takeaways from this exhibition is the, the joy and positivity that you're and the hope that we're, we're left with. Um, so Julia, same, same question to you. What was your biggest takeaway from this exhibition and the, and the impact of the work? Well, you know, as a whole community, we've changed. And I think that when visitors come in, they'll see bits of their own experiences throughout the work. Um, but the other thing that comes through is that as a whole, it's, it's a cohesive work and we worked alone in our studios. And though we could always reach out to each other, which we did, many artists would call each other, Zoom with each other and talk about their work and ask for advice. So we reached out to each other. We were working alone and we didn't talk about what colors and we didn't match our match our works together. And but yet there's this thread that goes through the whole show that shows how well we collaborate as a group of women. And um, and I think that's a really important takeaway from this exhibition. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you see it, you see how beautifully the work works together. Uh, and, and that can only be from how well the group communicates and the respect that you all have for each other shows very clearly. And it, it's just, it is so beautiful and encouraging. So, uh, wow, thank you, uh, Alessandra and Julia for taking us through this exhibition and telling us about the artwork in it. Um, and I'm, we're ready to do some Q&A. So if any of our viewers have questions, just go ahead and pop them in that Q&A box. But I'll start on a really relevant one straight off the, what we were ending on. Alessandra, how did you figure out how to lay out this show so that those conversations are happening? Uh, it, I'll read the whole comment. It flows so seamlessly and beautifully. You looked at so many works, chose a small percentage of what you looked at, percentage of what you looked at, and then figured out how to display it in such a fabulous way. Please share your insights. Well, I've been curating for 20 years, so. <laughs> That means that, and I was a painter. So I think when I think of an exhibition, I still think of an exhibition in the way that I would compose my paintings. And I would look at um, a composition of the galleries and a flow and the color balance and colors and taking the viewer through uh, so that their eye goes from one thing to the next and is attracted, you know, they want to, they see something out of the corner of their eye. They're looking at something and they see that color or that detail out of the corner of their eye and it draws them to that place. And so it was really funny. I'll tell you a funny story of how I actually planned the exhibition. 
question, which was, I, you know, I couldn't go to the museum and Katie had sent me the, the, the plan. And I, and I knew those galleries really well because ironically, they, or interestingly, they were the same galleries as the undocumented exhibit in two, from 2017. So I, I did what I teach my students. I actually created a miniature 3D model of the gallery and I cut out all the little pictures of the artists to scale and uh, and I laid it out and then I was like, how am I going to convey this to Katie? So I took my iPhone and I did a walkthrough <laughs> for Katie to be able to envision that and then translate it into the museum. But but yeah, basically, um, and, and it was just uh, seeing that those conversations between the artists actually came across in the work. So when I was looking at the pieces, I was looking at those connections and relationships and they were evident uh, as I was laying it out. So I would see the, the, the colors coming through or some of the ideas and the details. And, uh, and I had a lot of fun. I mean, I have a lot of fun. That, that's my favorite part of curating, you know, selecting the works and laying them out um, into a space. And I got to tell you, that was a lot of fun for me too, uh, watching the video. Um, and then I took what I saw from Alessandra and I translated it into our, our 3D program that um, we used to lay out shows. So I, I pasted the, the artwork and then, and then I got to take Alessandra on a 3D tour through the 3D model. And yeah, it, that is seriously the funnest part of this job is creating um, the whole exhibition is a piece of art, basically. Um, so next question. Thank you, Alessandra. Next question, Julia. What was your inspiration for the She series? How did you come up with that, that shape and figure? Um, well, I was already working with torsos and um, I was advised to, to do some smaller ones because I was having a hard time with the large piece. And um, it was just, it was taking forever and I needed some closure. <laughs> I needed some moments to finish. So, um, so I did a model, I sculpted the form, um, just, I, I didn't really follow any particular person. I sculpted the form and then I made a mold, two molds of the form and started casting. And then each one I wanted to look different. And, um, and I could get those done in a matter of weeks instead of a year <laughs> as the big one was, was taking. And then I realized that um, I needed to do a lot of them and that um, the Women's March was so important. It was really, it had really affected you know, women that were going into politics, women that were speaking truth to power. And I felt that that was so important for me to talk about. And so then, you know, as Alessandra had mentioned, when, when it came for a number, I was thinking, well, I think in this year I can finish up to 75, maybe, but, you know, I'll talk with, and so, and I said, this number needs to be really important. And when she said 55 years since the Voting Rights Act, I was like, oh, that's it. And at that point, point I think when we had spoken I had about 15 done <laughs> so I spent the rest of you know the whole time making those wow um now here's a question that um I don't know if we'll have to just follow up on the answer for this but uh, Julia you might be able to speak to this can you tell us a little bit about Gail Titus's um quotes that she integrated, or, or maybe Alessandra can speak to this, uh, integrated into her painting um, and the different materials that she used to create her piece. I know that there are quotes embroidered onto yeah. the painting. Uh, I'll, and I'll, yeah, I'll start yeah. and then I'll, and then Alessandra, because um, Gail and I talked all the way through and actually Gail had started with a different, different painting. And then when George Floyd was killed, she contacted me. She says, I, I can't, I can't work on this painting that I've been doing. I have to do something completely different. And so she ended up doing, you know, this painting for the show instead. And she felt that it was really important to talk about the struggle that's been going on forever. I mean, you know, and, and so she looked up um, Martin Luther King quotes and um, oh, I'm sorry, Gail, I'm not remembering all the other people, but, but, and maybe, maybe Alessandra has them written down. So I don't remember all, but she hand embroidered on 
on more canvas that she had painted that and knew where she was going to be placing them that she also um uh kind of knitted and and embroidered uh works you know shapes and forms that kind of come off the paint too so when you go into the museum you definitely have to look at the detail and the embroidering just took so long and if you look at it you you might think that it was machine done but everyone was hand done wow really i really yes. didn't think it was machine done no, oh my done. goodness wow yeah that's tiny little letters to be making with a hand um incredible um, yeah, and I, I really actually like the po positioning of that artwork. You're coming from Allison Haley Paul's beautiful um, kind of landscape sunsets into this fiery red of, of, of that one work. And then it goes to darkness and fades into black into this dark corner of the end of the exhibition with Carrie's uh, beacon of hope. Uh, so that, Alessandra, a real testament to to the thoughtfulness of uh, the positioning of the works that you did. Um, so yes, thank you. I'm really glad that you knew the answer to that question. Um, okay, I, I have a couple of, of really easy ones. I actually think I can handle these ones. And um, all of our audience, you'll have to forgive me for not mentioning that this exhibition is open through August 1st. Very pertinent information. Uh, you can come to see the exhibition through August 1st, uh, Sunday, August 1st. Um, and then are the artworks available for sale? Most of them are available. Yes, we do not do sales through the museum, but please do, if you see any works that uh, you would like to take home with you after the exhibition closes, just let the front desk know. We can uh, get you in touch with the artists and I'm sure any something can be worked out. Uh, so. I yes, have a Julia? question, Katie. Is is yeah. there a list in the um, gift store of the artists and the work that's available, the prices? Yes, we do have a list with the prices that the artists shared with us um, so that we can share those with visitors, any visitors who ask. But again, the, the sales are not being conducted through OMA. They'll all be conducted privately through the artists. But I do encourage anyone to, to think about that when they're visiting the, the museum. Um, and then we got a question, when will, when can we expect the QR code driven commentary? Mm -hmm. I am, I have my fingers crossed for the end of next week. We'll see if we can make that happen. Maybe the beginning of the following week. Um, but we're really close almost, uh, we only have one more group to record with and um, a number of the videos have already been edited together. So um I, the biggest thing is mainly getting that signage printed uh, those qr codes up and uh, what i really want to do is get this onto our website so that's still a technical uh, mm. challenge that we're going to <laughs> we're going to face but yes we want the visitors to be able to hear from every artist every voice in this exhibition it has uh, an amazing story to tell um, oh, wow, now the questions are really just flooding in. Uh, do you think there is a new genre of art being born out of the pandemic? So, oh, let's, uh, Alessandra, what do you think? And then Julia. Well, definitely, I think curators will look back at this year and maybe at some, you know, they will want to do a, 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 pan, a show, an exhibit of the pandemic. And we already did one, you know, really, you know, an exhibit in a sense dealing with the pandemic times, which covers a lot of different themes. Um, but but I know that that we will, I, I was looking, um, you know, at artists' works, whether they were friends on social media, that were definitely, driven by what was happening at the time um, to create pieces that were uh, related to what we were experiencing. So I think that there will be definitely a whole series of works uh, that um, touch will touch upon that this year of the pandemic. Yeah, I, I agree with Alessandra. I, I think that um, artists a lot of artists were really affected by all the things that were happening and their normal work just didn't make sense in that moment. Um, so, so I think we're seeing a lot more work that's social commentary. I don't know that it's something that will 
last or stick or any of that, of course, but I am seeing a lot. And I'm seeing um, a, a lot of artists, I think, like I mentioned before, uh, their practices changing and um, they're exploring new avenues, new techniques, um, whether it was because they were isolated and had the opportunity or because mm -hmm. they felt mentally pushed to the brink and they really needed to find another way to express themselves and their old ways were not uh, working out anymore. So yeah, maybe maybe not quite a new genre or new movement, but certainly it has affected artistic practice in a, in a big way. Um, all right, and I know there is a, a number of people, myself included, who uh, are probably going to be very upset that I haven't mentioned this yet, but there is a catalog for this exhibition, and it is an amazing cat a catalog for this exhibition. Uh, it is going to be for sale this upcoming Thursday, so a week from today. It will be for sale in the museum store. If you can't get to the museum, you can call the museum and we can send one to you. Um, you can do a f order over the phone. But yes, there is, all of the artists um, are represented in this incredible, beautiful catalog that uh, I, I am looking for. There's a, if you stick on the, the program after we're all done, you'll see a slide uh, uh, with the showing the cover, kind of, um, at least the beautiful, beautiful logo that was designed by one of the artists in, in this show. Um, all right, I'm just scrolling. Okay, from uh, two Oceanside women artists, we truly appreciate this presentation, the community and the circle of support. Thank you. And yes, there is uh, just a flood of support. Uh, Julie and Alessandra, I don't know if you've been able to keep up with the chatter on the side, but um, I am so grateful to both of you for bringing this exhibition to Oma. So grateful for every single artist in this group. You are all beautiful gems of humans. And, <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you for, for hanging out with us tonight and for sharing these stories. And um, I just can't wait until we all get to be together to celebrate this exhibition in person, which I, I know will be happening soon. Um, and before we uh, sign off, I also need to say thank you to our amazing magician behind the curtain, Adam Nikolai, who is our public programs director, and he makes all of these virtual programs possible. So thank you so very much, Adam. Um, were there any last closing thoughts, Alessandra and Julia? Uh, we're so grateful too. It's such a beautiful space, and um, I don't think we could have ask for better. I just, I think we were so lucky that it just all came together. It wouldn't be the show that it is without Alessandra and without Oma and then with the connection between the artists. So I think we all feel really grateful and very fortunate. Thank you. And I, I just, okay. you know, I love working with all of the artists. It was, I knew some of the artists before I was, you know, invited to, to curate and other artists I got to know in the process. And I just, for me, working collaboratively is, is really important. That's what I love to do. And so this was uh, really a great um, project. And, uh, and I love working with, with you, Katie. So you always make everything so easy. And so, you know, it's a joy to work with you. And, and so, and I'm very happy and excited, very happy with the results. I mean, to think that we struggled through so much last year, but yet the, when I go into those uh, galleries, I just feel so joyful and it's just really great. That's so true. Yes, this is a joyful exhibition. Everyone come see it and feel feel very good.